Chapter 5. The Awakening of the Sawhorse The sawhorse, finding himself alive, seemed even more astonished than Tip. He rolled his knotty eyes from side to side, taking a first wondering view of the world in which he had now so important an existence. He then tried to look at himself, but he had indeed no neck to turn, so that in the endeavor to see his body he kept circling around and around, without catching even a glimpse of it. His legs were stiff and awkward, for there were no knee joints in them, so that presently he bumped against Jack Pumpkinhead and sent that personage tumbling upon the moss that lined the roadside. Tit became alarmed at this accident, as well as at the persistence of the sawhorse in prancing around in a circle, so he called out, Whoa, whoa there! The sawhorse paid no attention whatever to this command, and the next instant brought one of his wooden legs down upon Tip's foot so forcibly that the boy danced away in pain to a safer distance, from where he yelled again, Whoa, whoa, I say! Jack had now managed to raise himself to a sitting position, and he looked at the sawhorse with much interest. I don't believe the animal can hear you, he remarked. I shout loud enough, don't I? answered Tip angrily. Yes, but the horse has no ears, said the smiling pumpkin head. Sure enough, exclaimed Tip, noting the fact for the first time. How then am I going to stop him? But at that instant the sawhorse stopped himself, having concluded it was impossible to see his own body. He saw Tip, however, and came close to the boy to observe him more fully. It was really comical to see the creature walk, for it moved the legs on its right side together and those of its left side together, as a pacing horse does, and that made its body rock sideways, like a cradle. Tip patted it upon the head and said, Good boy, good boy, in a coaxing tone, and the sawhorse pranced away to examine, with its bulging eyes, the form of Jack Pumpkinhead. I must find a halter for him, said Tip and having made a search in his pocket, he produced a roll of strong cord. Unwinding this, he approached the sawhorse and tied the cord around its neck, afterward fastening the other end to a large tree. The sawhorse, not understanding the action, stepped backward and snapped the string easily, but it made no attempt to run away. He's stronger than I thought, said the boy, and rather obstinate, too. Why don't you make him some ears? asked Jack. Then you can tell him what to do. That's a splendid idea, said Tip. How did you happen to think of it? Why, I didn't think of it, answered the pumpkin head. I didn't need to, for it's the simplest and easiest thing to do. So Tip got out his knife and fashioned some ears out of the bark of a small tree. I mustn't make them too big, he said as he whittled, or our horse would become a donkey. How is that? inquired Jack from the roadside. Why, a horse has bigger ears than a man, and a donkey has bigger ears than a horse, explained Tip. Then, if my ears were longer, would I be a horse? asked Jack. My friend, said Tip gravely, you'll never be anything but a pumpkin head, no matter how big your ears are. Oh, returned Jack, nodding, I think I understand. If you do, you're a wonder, remarked the boy, but there's no harm in thinking, you understand. I guess these ears are ready now. Will you hold the horse while I stick them on? Certainly, if you'll help me up, said Jack. So Tip raised him to his feet, and the pumpkin head went to the horse and held its head, while the boy bored two holes in it with his knife blade and inserted the ears. They make him look very handsome, said Jack admiringly. But those words, spoken close to the sawhorse, and being the first sounds he had ever heard, so startled the animal that he made a bound forward and tumbled Tip on one side and Jack on the other. Then he continued to rush forward, as if frightened by the clatter of his own footsteps. Whoa! shouted Tip, picking himself up. Whoa, you idiot! Whoa! 
The sawhorse would probably have paid no attention to this, but just then it stepped a leg into a gopher hole and stumbled head over heels to the ground, where it lay upon its back, frantically waving its four legs in the air. Tip ran up to it. "'You're a nice sort of horse, I must say,' he exclaimed. "'Why didn't you stop when I yelled, "Whoa!" "'Does woe mean to stop?' asked the sawhorse in a surprised voice, as it rolled its eyes upward to look at the boy. "'Of course it does,' answered Tip. "'And a hole in the ground means to stop also, doesn't it?' continued the horse. "'To be sure, unless you step over it,' said Tip. "'What a strange place this is!' the creature exclaimed, as if amazed. "'What am I doing here, anyway?' "'Why, I've brought you to life,' answered the boy. "'But it won't hurt you any.' If you mind me and do as I tell you, then I will do as you tell me, replied the sawhorse, humbly. But what happened to me a moment ago? I don't seem to be just right some way. You're upside down, explained Tip. But just keep those legs still a minute, and I'll set you right side up again. How many sides have I? asked the creature wonderingly. Several, said Tip briefly but do keep those legs still. The sawhorse now became quiet and held its legs rigid so that Tip, after several efforts, was able to roll him over and set him upright. Ah, I seem all right now, said the queer animal with a sigh. One of your ears is broken, Tip announced, after a careful examination. I'll have to make a new one. Then he led the sawhorse back to where Jack was vainly struggling to regain his feet, and after assisting the pumpkin head to stand upright, Tip whittled out a new ear and fastened it to the horse's head. Now, said he, addressing his steed, pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. Woe means stop. Get up means to walk forward. Trot means to go as fast as you can. Understand? I believe I do, returned the horse. Very good. We are all going on a journey to the Emerald City to see His Majesty the Scarecrow, and Jack Pumpkinhead is going to ride on your back so he won't have to wear out his joints. I don't mind, said the sawhorse. Anything that suits you suits me. Then Tip assisted Jack to get upon the horse. Hold on tight, he cautioned, or you may fall off and crack your pumpkin head. That would be horrible, said Jack with a shudder. What shall I hold on to? Why, hold on to his ears, replied Tip, after a moment's hesitation. Don't do that, remonstrated the sawhorse, for then I can't hear. That seemed reasonable, so Tip tried to think of something else. I'll fix it, said he at length. He went into the wood and cut a short length of limb from a young, stout tree. One end of this he sharpened to a point, and then he dug a hole in the back of the sawhorse, just behind its head. Next, he brought a piece of rock from the road and hammered the point firmly into the animal's back. Stop! Stop! shouted the horse. You're jarring me terribly. Does it hurt? asked the boy. Not exactly hurt, answered the animal, but it does make me quite nervous to be jarred. Well, it's all over now, said Tip encouragingly. Now, Jack, be sure to hold fast to this post, and then you can't fall off and get smashed. So Jack held on tight, and Tip said to the horse, Get up! The obedient creature at once walked forward, rocking from side to side as he raised his feet from the ground. Tip walked beside the sawhorse, quite content with this addition to their party. Presently, he began to whistle. "'What does that sound mean?' asked the horse. "'Don't pay any attention to it,' said Tip. "'I'm just whistling, and that only means I'm pretty well satisfied.' "'I'd whistle myself if I could push my lips together,' remarked Jack. "'I fear, dear father, that in some respects I am sadly lacking.' After journeying on for some distance, the narrow path they were following turned into a broad roadway paved with yellow brick. By the side of the road, Tip noticed a signpost that read, Nine Miles to the Emerald City. But now it was growing dark, 
so he decided to camp for the night by the roadside and to resume their journey the next morning by daybreak. He led the sawhorse to a grassy mound upon which grew several bushy trees and carefully assisted the pumpkin head to alight. I think I'll lay you upon the ground overnight, said the boy. You will be safer that way. How about me? asked the sawhorse. It won't hurt you to stand, replied Tip, and as you can't sleep, you may as well watch out and see that no one comes near to disturb us. Then the boy stretched himself upon the grass beside the pumpkin head, and being greatly wearied by the journey, was soon fast asleep. 